of the second quarter getting ready to start up. And before we move on, what do you guys think about what we've seen so far from the Knicks? And it's really been a dominant effort on the glass. That's been the key here. Yeah, they've established nice low post presence, which always tends to help you on the rebounding battle. They've got him on Shumpert. Jeremy Tyler is out there with Stoudemire. Then there's Felton. And it's Prihioni in at the point. They're the group New York will start the second one. Stoudemire. Chicago grabs the miss. Tell you what, guys, if you had questions about Amari's willingness to play a role on the team, he should have put them all to rest with how he came off the bench for the Knicks. Couldn't have been easy for him, but he handled it well. Okay, well, let's check in with Doris Burke reporting from our sideline in this game. Doris, take it away. There's no doubting, guys, that point guard Derrick Rose is the town of Chicago. But Rose has never been the type to court that kind of attention, preferring to keep his head down. He said, quote, my whole life, I was always the one everyone was talking about. I've never really wanted the attention, but it has always been there. And the better I play, the more attention I get. But I hate attention. It's weird. I'm in a bind. You. Yeah, he's a piece of work, isn't he? <laughs> Thank you, Doris. Well, with Amari is dealing with those knee troubles, I might forget he was really the one who first made the Knicks a destination. Yeah, signing there in free agency in 2010. He had a huge season, averaged 25 points a game, and I think really energized that New York fan base. He was kind of the franchise player. Oh, a rock. Well, I'll tell you what, you consider all the injuries the Bulls had last year, and you look at the 34-18 mark against the Eastern Conference, and it's absolutely remarkable considering what they had to go through personnel-wise. That's foul number two on them. They might not warrant sitting in entirely, but uh, you know, another one before halftime, they could, they could be in some trouble. Meta World Peace, he's checked in for Jeremy Tyler. Knocked loose. Here's Gibson. Heinrich outside. Jacks up a three. That's good. Heinrich's got 12 points in the game. Absolutely on fire from beyond the arc. Yeah, that's where he's getting his points. And back to the Bulls in the East. It wasn't just one guy who stepped in the shoes of Rose over the part of but Really, it was a group effort. You know, you looked at the roster last year, you kind of scratch your head. You go, how is this team going to get to the second round? without Derrick Rose, but they did it with a group of role players, with a front line that was tough and nasty and rebounded well, and with great coaching, too. Well, for a long time, for the New York fans, going to see a Knicks game was an exercise and masochism, but they've turned it around in a big way, and now this is a tough place to play for a road team. And that's out of bounds. Chicago will retain possession. Oh, we've got a moment here. Uh, let's look at the last month and the Knicks and how they ranked in the NBA. Third in blocks, fourth in rebounding. And they also show up top five in team field goal percentage. That's excellent. Actually, that's almost, that's elite level. And to me, what really stands out with all those numbers you talked about, Clark, are, are the blocks because uh, they're, they're a physical team. They're dominant in the paint. And they've got great length, and when they're between you and the basket, uh, it's tough to get a shot over these guys. The three. Here's Stoudemire, and that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. You didn't get to that one quite in time, Kevin. Those can be tough to gauge sometimes. The Bulls making a switch here. Bulls trail by five. Heinrich kicks to Buck. Bulls moving the ball around. Tipped. And now the Knicks on the break. Well, I love it. Active hands on the steal. Active feet on the fast break. And Clark Power on the dunk. And guys, this is just too close of a game to be giving the ball up like that and then failing to get back in transition. Heinrich kicks to Boozer. Butler with the ball, now defended by Hardaway. Butler dishes to Heinrich. Fast break, here they come. World Peace, the... Oh, look out! Wow, and that sort of 
showmanship is just a team trying hard to get back into this game like this. Yeah, it's definitely a jam with emphasis. A, a big apostrophe or exclamation point. How about maybe even a question mark, partner? <laughs> well, you know what the questions are about now. It's their defense, that's for sure. Quarter two and just under two and a half minutes gone by. Murphy issues to Heinrich. Outside Butler. Passes it to Dunleavy. Back to Butler. Feeds to Dunleavy. Outside Butler. Pass to Heinrich. To end the run. World peace against Boozer. Heinrich, right side. There's the dish to Butler. The Bulls keep it alive. And Murphy kicks to Heinrich. Butler back to Heinrich. Fires from deep. Gets it to go. Heinrich's got 15. Well, he certainly isn't the one to blame for them being in the hole. He's been on the money with his game. Felton against Heinrich. Felton kicks to Hardaway. On the wing, Shepard. From outside the arc. Yes, and it's Hardaway picking up the assist. And that's now nine points for Ramon Shepard. It's a natural response. And we'll say they can give the three as well as they can take the three. One lady kicks to Heinrich. Outside Butler. Lays it up and banks it in. Butler's got his first points in this one. There it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great position inside. Yeah, getting the ball into the post should be their first option every time down. Force the defense to adapt and adjust. Heinrich with it. Now guarded by Shumper. And blocked. Moves back up. Looked like a goal 10, yet they're saying it was on the way down. Count it. He thought he had the ref saw it differently. They'll count the basket. That whistle got a big response from this crowd, and it is... Not a favorable one, let's say. I'll tell you what, the fans can't believe that they made that call. Looking at who's out there now for the Knicks. Stoudemire comes in for Meta World Peace. And it's Pablo Prigioni in for Hardaway. Felton kicks to Prigioni. And Kirk Heinrich picks up the foul. That's his first foul. Chicago making some changes. Muhammad comes in for Carlos Boozer. And it's Marcus Teague in for Kirk Heinrich. Stoudemire kicks to Felton. In low to Martin. Soft touch off the glass. They are not rotating nearly quickly enough on defense down low. Got to get quicker there. And even if it costs them some foul trouble, I mean, they need to start putting some bodies on bodies. Be physical. A nice shot by Teague. As opposed to the first quarter, they're doing a much better job from behind the arc here in the second. They're starting to heat up a little bit, percolate from behind that three-point line. And as a result, they're chipping away at that lead. Back to Schumper. There's the three. And that comes off the assist by Vernon Felton. Felton's got six assists here tonight. In his return to New York, I tell you, Raymond Felton looked to have his best season yet as a pro. He came in and made plays and the guard spot for the Knicks. Now, they're finally starting to shoot the ball a little bit better now. You know, I thought this was the play, the kind of play they needed in the first quarter, but as I always like to say, it's better late than never. And for Felton, I guess, just something in the water in New York. Husky, he's played his best basketball in the big city. Yeah, he had a, a good run there several years back before he was Carmelo Anthony trade. And now that he's back in New York, Felton once again having a, a terrific impact on that team. Teague on the double team. Prigioni passes to Felton. He kicks it to Prigioni. On the wing, Shepard. And again, it's New York. It took him a little while to get into the flow of this game, but now he's definitely found his stride and rhythm. T kicks to Buck. Back to T. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. Pass to Dunleavy. Dishes it to Muhammad. He's against Martin. Shot clock at six. A second chance effort. Muhammad, no good. And you gotta like the defense inside, really protecting the rim. Challenging shots and making his presence felt around the rim, that's exactly what he can give you. 
And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. Gentlemen, last season it seemed there was a little back and forth between head coach Tom Thibodeau and the Bulls front office regarding the big minutes he gave his starters. Thibodeau said, quote, it's never the right amount of minutes. That's the only thing I know. If a guy's not playing big minutes, it's not enough minutes. So you play to win. That's the whole thing. And when you're a young team, guys can handle minutes. But guys, both Dang and Noah missed significant time. Noah only playing 66 games in the regular season. Dang out through the last seven games of the playoffs. You wonder if maybe they have a point. They've worked to round out the roster. Course. That should help those uh, minutes stay down. And it's out of bounds. The Knicks will take it the other way. People have talked about the defensive renaissance in Chicago as a big part of their turnaround, and that's accurate. Thibs has done wonders for this team defensively, but another aspect is that they've had one of the deepest benches in the league the past few years, too. Off his foot, and it's being called a kickball. Here's Hudrick. Smith outside. He passes it to Prehioni. Back to Smith. Six to shoot. And it's sent back by Muhammad. Fast break. Here comes Chicago. Snell. And the layup's good off the glass. Go back to what you said, Clark, about Chicago. It is a credit to them that they've been able to constantly add or draft talent that is ready to step in for him, and Steve contributed off the bench. Yeah, no doubt about that. You think about Taj Gibson, a late first-round pick. Jimmy Butler last year really emerged as one of the best young players in the league. Great story. So terrific job by the Bulls' front office in, in figuring out uh, which player to take later in the first round. And the shot is good. And now it's only a five-point New York lead. He had to wait for a while all the way until now. But he finally got his first three-pointer of the game. Udrick dishes to Smith. The pass to Carmelo. He's covered by Dan. The trade. And there's J.R. Smith on the assist by Anthony. Three points for J.R. Smith. Well, he should be safe if they keep shooting like this. Well, they're on fire. I mean, they're absolutely on target and just looking to pad that scoring total, too. They're forcing the ball inside, and it's working beautifully. Yeah, the defense has been futile here. Five of the last six field goals in the lane. And Prigioni gets to Smith. Misses the three. They've been able to get out to this lead without really getting a very reliable performance out of him from the field. Well, they pass it to Dan. There's the feed to T. Snell outside Dan. He dishes it to T. Back to Dan. From downtown. Rebound by Smith. For the New York Knicks, they come in off a good outing against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. And I think, Kevin, you know, they really showed how important it is to have a strong bench performance. You go out on the road, you can't rely on your starters night in and night out. The reserves have to contribute and help them out. I think we definitely saw that, Steve, throughout the game. They were really tied together as a team. Didn't make any difference who was out on the floor. Uh, you'll take every road game win you can, and they're happy with that one. The Bulls making a switch here. Felton's check in. New York shooting the sixth attempt at the free throw line tonight. Well, I think they've lost their aggressiveness a little bit. They're not getting fouled and going to the line. Well, you know, that's an excellent point you make there, Steve, but we got to be careful not to nitpick here. I mean, they do still have the lead, and that's an advantage they'd be wise to continue to press forward on. Rose dishes to Dang. And now the Knicks on the break. Rudrick's got the ball, and it's blocked by Rose. Right side, Rose. And he uses the glass on the layup. Man, a gaping hole in the defense that time, and he didn't waste any time getting through it. New York leading by seven. Felton with the ball. He's picked up by Heinrich. High post try. Rebounded by Rhodes. It has not been an easy quarter for him, at least offensively speaking. 36 seconds left in the first half. Back to Heinrich. 
Here's Boozer in the post, defended by Premione. Then kicks to Rose. He feeds it to Boozer. Gets it to go. Boozer's got eight points. He really made that mismatch pay off. A defender giving up that much size isn't going to be asking. And Felton is up top, guarded by Heinrich. Felton kicks to Smith. And it's Chicago with the rebound. Tang's got three rebounds now in this one. And following this game, they hit the road to challenge the Bucks at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. That'll be the second of this two-game road trip. And yeah, there's no question for Milwaukee. I mean, that's a game they would really like to have. Close game as we wrap up the second quarter. Knicks out front, leading by five. We'll have the start of the third quarter for you shortly. But first, it's the Sprint Halftime Show with Damon Bruce. By Sprint. Report presented by Sprint. 